We're good. Okay, I didn't know. I mean, we're yeah, we're beholden to technology now, so heard about it so we can go. All right, then let's go. All right, everybody, we're going to get started. Don't forget to turn off your phones or any other gadgets that are prone to making noise. Um, any paperwork for us goes to Mr. Curran, who, among other things, is the sergeant at arms. Um, we'll begin with a roll call, Madam Clerk. Bell. Curran. Here. Freeling. Harrison. Hinkleman. Here. Majeric. At here, Pittsburgh present. Ballrat here, Workle here, Yarbrough present. Elliot here, Mr. Chair. We have ten present. Thank you. Minutes from April four. Today, moved by Pitchford, supported by Volrath. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved. Requisition review. Good morning. Does anybody have any questions about the requisitions? Great. Thank you. All right. Scheduled discussion. First, we have Carrie Smetanka Haney. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy rainy April. Um, so Brian wanted me to uh, come in and just touch base and remind everybody we are in fact going live on our JWorks product um, for the remainder of our cases. Um, so on, on Monday, happy tax day. Um, it'll be ex equally as exciting at the courthouse. So um, we have, if for those of you who are a little bit newer to the board, we have been live on JWorks, um, which is an Equibon product in civil and probate since 2021 and that's not that's a couple of our courts but it's not nearly the large majority of our cases right our highest volume of cases is in criminal and traffic so those along with our juvenile abuse neglect and um, delinquency files will all be transitioning on monday so we have a reduced schedule um, i provided brian with the press release he sent out a couple of weeks ago we are operating on a reduced schedule a little bit this week, but really effective Monday for the uh, coming few weeks in St. Joe specifically. Niles um, probably thinking about that a little bit differently today, but at the time offered to uh, go ahead and go full steam because they're only operating with one judge as opposed to the larger group that we have up here in St. Joe. Um, but everything in St. Joe will be reduced. Um, we'll be operating things like arraignments, uh, exams, pre-exams, things like that. Um, and then for those docket types, our civil and probate files will be going just as they have been in domestic relations. Uh, so we are just asking for patience from the public and our justice partners as we go through this process. It's gonna be a huge change for our staff. Those of you who all, I know you've talked about the mainframe a lot. Um, so you've all seen the screens they look a whole lot different than what they will look like in JWorks. And it's going to be a little slower for those of us who've done DOS-based system processing. Don't tell Chris I said that. Um, it, tab enter is really quick, right? And it's done a great job for us for the last multiple decades. But internet-based processes are going to be a little bit slower than just tab and enter. So um, while we learn our processes, we're just asking for some patience and grace. And um, But we're excited for moving forward and eventually seeing how the system can work for us. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Anyone have any questions? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Uh, are we doing Jill? Next or no animal control. Animal control. Okay. All right. We have Catherine Francis here. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine. I don't think most of you know me really. You might have seen me here and there, but uh, oh, oh, I have a you got a thing. And do I press the hang on a minute? Let me get oh, to, let me get well, to sorry. <laughs> okay, now you're gone. What do I do? I just what button do I yep, press to advance it? Right this there. one here? Nope. The one Catherine, right stand by one, one moment. Carrie, are you wanting to gracefully exit? You didn't want to run right Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I was full. Cool. This, this arrow right This arrow, the one that's well worn off. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, thank you. Sorry for my technical glitch. Um, I'm Catherine Francis. I am the outreach coordinator at Berrien County Animal Control. I'm also on the board of friends, and that's how I got involved 
Friends of Berrien County Animal Control, um, how I got involved originally as a volunteer. And then we started Friends. And then I thought, oh, this seems like I could help out more if I worked there, which turned out to be beyond true. <laughs> so um, I'm here to just give an animal control events update, basically. So I do events, volunteers, and I involve myself in all kinds of stuff because I want to learn how everything goes. Um, so we have three big events coming up. Let's see if I can do this. Oh. I did it back. There we go. There go. Um, the first event I want to talk about is one of our low cost vaccine clinics that's coming up on the 20th, um, hosted by We Saw Township Fire and Rescue. Um, we like to offer these. We'd like to be able to offer them more often. Um, basically, it helps get low cost rabies vaccines and other vaccines into our community where vet costs are quite expensive for a lot of people. And you need a rabies vaccine in order to license your dog. That's the main thing we're looking for. Um, the problem with rabies vaccines, why we can't just offer them at the shelter is that we, it's required by law to be a vet to do it. So we have to hire a vet hire, volunteer, various different ways, and get people to bring their animals to these various events. We've done them in Eau Claire, we've done them at the shelter. Right now, we can only offer them about every other month, um, just because it's extra time, it's a weekend day where we need a lot of staff to support it, a lot of volunteers. We'd like to be able to offer more of them because they're usually really well subscribed. Um, we offer uh, rabies for 20 to $25, which is, the best price in town by far. Um, and then you can also buy your license there and microchips. So that's, uh, yes, sir. Commissioner Freeling would like to ask. I just want to ask a clarifying question. Uh, Sunday is April 21st. So oh. is it Saturday? The clinic is on Sunday. I apologize. So it's the 21st. The 21st. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a, an edit to that because we have an event on the 20th. So that's on Sunday from 10 to 2. Got it. Thank oh, I missed you. that part too. All right. Well, I need to get a proofreader. Um, <laughs> yes. Sunday, April 21st at We Saw Township and yes. Fire and Rescue. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we had one about two months ago. Yep. So Sunday, April 21st. Clarify. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. Um, I'll move on to the next one. If anybody has any questions about vaccine clinics, might be the best way to do it. Um, this is on the actual 20th, Saturday, from uh, 11 to 2. This is a Boss Services adoption event. It's pretty awesome. We did this last year and had a great adoption uptake. Honor Credit Union is sponsoring the adoption fees. It's going to be this year hosted with us and the Humane Society. We'll both have animals there. We'll have dogs and cats. And it's fantastic for us because Boss puts a lot of marketing money and energy behind it. And it they're at their shop, there's a lot of space. So they get food trucks and, and make it a real big event. So it's huge for us. Our shelter is as always at capacity. So um, having getting the, the income from th this adoption event and also just the publicity to get the animals adopted is absolutely enormous for us. And they're bombarding Facebook and this is one of their events. They have the staff time and ability to pull all this together. Um, um, and it's just an, a, an amazing event. So uh, if you want a dog at no cost, <laughs> um, it's a great event to come to. And we'll try and get as many dogs there as we can. And cats. We're going to have cats, too. Yes? It says uh, meet King if you want to adopt King. If you want to adopt King. So you can come meet King right now and pay the $85 adoption fee. Or if you want to adopt King... Um, so we'll, we'll be doing same day adoptions, which is something we've been able, we started doing last year, actually at this event it was the first time we did off site adoptions. Um, it's a little bit of a challenge because our software isn't the most mobile, um, but you can adopt King who we still have in the shelter, um, at that event, we'll be able to do the full adoption process at the event and people can leave with King right from there. And he's a, he's a great dog. He's actually a dog who came in, his muzzle was separated from the top of his mouth. Um, and we had surgery done on him up at uh, Arrow Pet Clinic. Um, and he's just a fantastic guy. So he's one of our sort of medical success stories and is a really good boy. <laughs> Any questions about that? It's on the 20th from 11 to 2. And I, I know it might seem nerve wracking to some people that adoptions are free, 
Um, but we do practice an open adoption policy and, um, you know, go through our normal policies and procedures to make sure it's a good home. Yes, ma'am. Lost services, where is it located at? Uh, on M139, um, over in Benton Harbor. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. I, remember I don't know the actual time. address, no but you can't the, that's a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, was talking I, I knew, I, I knew but I couldn't rattle the cobwebs out of the way to remember exactly. Over near Thank the you. Sparkle Car Wash. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering. It's uh, 2188 M139. Thank you. Okay. And finally, um, oh, that came out ugly. Um, the, the 2024, so Bits for Barks has been an ongoing fundraiser for the community. It's three women who love throwing a party, and they work with various rescue groups throughout um, uh, Berrien County. Um, and they, it's their 16th annual Bits for Barks. It's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger over the years. It got big enough that it was at the Mendel Center one year before COVID. And now it's at Harbor Shores, which Harbor Shores Inn, which um, basically donates the space to the event. Um, it's a dinner and an auction. Last year, they raised funds for Friends of Berrien County Animal Control and for uh, Paws of Hope. This year, it's just their their real focus is on spay and neuter. So it's just for Friends of Berrien County Animal Control, which means for Berrien County Animal Control. Um, and we're what we're really trying to do. We've been working with Brian on this in various different ways. Is to get some more low cost spay and neuter in the county. We don't have any really. Uh, you have to travel to South Bend, Kalamazoo, um, in order to get affordable spay and neuter services. So we've been working. Um, it's a it's a difficult process just because veterinarian there's a veterinarian shortage and things like that. Um, we at Animal Control spend our time and it funds this. Every dog and cat adopted out of Animal Control is now spayed and neutered. Um, and we spend a lot of time in our new van that friends bought, um, driving back and forth to South Bend, to Elkhart, who have good facilities for that to get every animal spayed and neutered. So they are raising money for us. Last year, it raised about $80,000. We're, we're trying something new this year, which is an online auction. Maybe for the people that are just there, we were thinking of opening it up, but it's all new software for us. So it's a little bit uh, nerve wracking. Um, the idea is to get a, a lot of people. There's a lot of regular attendees. It's already sold out. It sells out very quickly because we're limited on the space at the Inn at Harbor Shores. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity and we're so glad that they're partnering with us. Any questions about that or anything else? All right. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you, Catherine. Can't yeah, thank imagine you. Imagine anyone being a better outreach coordinator than you. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you. I love doing it. <laughs> that, that's evident. Uh, Jill Adams, Parks Director, is next. All right. I was, <clears throat> I'll press the button. I was asked to come in and talk uh, real quick about the community recycling events and give you an update. We had our first recycling event for the year this past Tuesday. And um, thankfully we picked Tuesday a year ago because it was beautiful weather and we had a great turnout. Um, before I get into a, some picture slideshow from the event on Tuesday, I just want to highlight Jason Field and Genevieve Graves from the Parks Department. They are the ones that put on this massive event along with Lake Michigan College, a uh, very small committee, but they are dedicated and they handled it like a boss. They did a great job. So there's some photos up here about the event. Um, did anyone get a chance to go out and drop off some of their recycling? Okay, you were out there? No, Okay. Um, as usual, the event was very busy at the beginning. People tend to come early. We. Um, the committee changed things around a little bit to try to help with that, but people still came out in droves at the beginning. So any future events, just a tip, the beginning is very busy and there's a wait, but if you wait till about an hour to an hour and a half into the event and come through, you'll get through it really quickly. So just a tip. So at the event on Tuesday, we welcomed about 620 participants, community members that came through and dropped off materials. And in order to do that, there were between 40 and 50 volunteers. And that includes the year's worth of planning, 
the setup in the morning, the event itself, and the cleanup afterwards. It's about a 12 hour day um, to put on a four hour event. This event's been going on for 14 years with Lake Michigan College. It started with the Volunteer Center of Southwest Michigan and Lake Michigan College wanted to be more green. They called us up back in 20, 2009, 2010, and it, we've been doing it ever since. At this event, it's our biggest event. We collected five different items listed here. So as people come into the event, we actually had three lanes of vehicles going at the same time at the beginning, just to make sure that we got people through efficiently and, um, and swiftly, swiftly is the word at the beginning. We have a group of volunteers that will greet and give information to the participants. As they move along the line, the first stop was styrofoam. Styrofoam goes to TriPower Recycling out of Elkhart. And we were able to fill, nearly fill a 53-foot semi-trailer of bags of styrofoam. The next lineup, stop in the lineup was for uh, used bicycles. And we work with Cycle Recycle out of Benton Harbor. And they filled this trailer by the end of the event and they estimate between 30 and 40 bikes were piled on there as they were pulling out of the parking lot, we will, um, the Jason and Genevieve will work with all our vendors to get the counts. We'll have those pretty soon. Next in the lineup was our electronics recycling. We work with our friends over at Green Earth Electronics Recycling located in St. Joseph. And we are estimating that we collected about 12,000 pounds of electronics on Tuesday. Next stop in the lineup is household hazardous waste. That includes liquids, chemicals, and cleaners from households, old batteries, fluorescent light bulbs, old medication, and a whole other list of items that uh, residents can bring in. We work with ERG Environmental out of Livonia, Michigan, <clears throat> and we are estimating that we collected about 22,000 pounds of household hazardous waste on Tuesday. And then the final stop in the lineup is our document, paper document shredding, very popular. Um, I would say a majority of the cars that came in had styrofoam and paper for shredding. It, it's not something that's offered at every event. It's, it's a little bit more uh, challenging of a service and that's provided free to the residents at this event. Um, so for the paper shredding, we worked with Rapid Shred. They are a regional, uh, a re a regional business. It, if I remember right, one of these, there were two trucks on site running simultaneously. One truck came from South Bend, another came from the Grand Rapids area in order to conduct our event. There is a cost to this and United Federal Credit Union stepped up and donated a large portion of the cost, dollars towards the event plus about 10 volunteers to help unload documents from vehicles, put them into the shredding truck on site. So United Federal Credit Union, we've partnered with them for a number of years now. They're very helpful and, and a great community partner. If uh, just for reference, one of these trucks holds about 15,000 pounds of shredded paper and we filled nearly both, we filled one truck to capacity and nearly filled the other one. So a lot of paper came in. All right, so this event is, um, it's huge. We partner with a lot of entities to pull it off. The cost, not the cost for the program just for the recycling services themselves is about $25,000. And it wouldn't be able to happen without the folks listed on this screen. Uh, Lake Michigan College, not only do they, they allow us to use their site, but they have groundskeepers, they have maintenance, they have their school resource officer on site helping with traffic. Um, and then the student volunteers are amazing. And we, most of the volunteers are students from the college. United Federal Credit Union, like I said, Republic Services, we, we don't accept cardboard on our list of accepted items, but we get a lot of cardboard in and we didn't wanna throw that away. So. Republic Services donates their recycling services to help with some of those other items that we get stuck with. We, and we recycle as much as we can. Cycle Recycle of Southwest Michigan and the Sheriff's Department, along with the Road Department, 
helping with some of the traffic issues. But our, our local partners that we work with on a regular basis, Green Earth, ERG Environmental, TriPower, Rapid Shred. We work with Classic Catering on this event as well. And then Midwest Family Broadcasting helps us with the promotion. And they were on site to do a live remote. So it took all these people to pull this, this event together. It was very successful. Um, I would say the, the main thing that I'm asking for you folks to do is to help us promote our future upcoming events that we have. So you've probably seen the flyer that's come out. Our next event for the community is May 11th. And that's taking place down in Buchanan at the Recycling Center. We've got four, four more events this year. And then on the back side of the flyer are, is other information about how people can get rid of, safely get rid of home medications throughout the year, drop-off centers. We also have clean, sweet pesticide collections coming up in the summer and scrap tire collections as well. So there's a stack of these flyers out here. If you wish to take some and, and hand them out to your constituents, we appreciate that. Or let us know where you want us to drop off or send some of these flyers and we would be happy to do that. Questions for Jill? Yes, sir. So obviously the county's loaded with farmers, excavators, trucking companies. Does the county ever allow them to bring in tires? I mean, do they, is there, do we do that? We have a scrap tire collection coming up. It's just for residential though, um, residential scrap tires. The, the larger oversized tires, if that's what you're asking specifically about, are definitely challenging. And in the past, we used to collect those. They cost about $75 to $100 each to, to recycle um, and they're labor intensive. So at the event coming up, we are not accepting oversized tires. Um, we, we can fill between four and six semi trailers full of tires during our residential collection. And that's, um, it can get expensive. Uh, but we do have a grant that helps cover a, a majority of that. Other questions? I have a question. I just say it's a great service for Berrien County and uh, not done everywhere. But I know in the last eight years I've been a commissioner, we've taken advantage of that and gotten rid of a lot of old chemicals and things that shed and out in the garage and basement and things that have collected over the years. <laughs> Like I say, tires, every you can name it, batteries. We've we've gotten rid of a lot of things um, through the through our parks department. And I think it's a great service, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. If it's a, it's a question for Jill, it doesn't relate to the presentation. But Jill, you've got an event coming up with um, a local uh, visitors organization. Are you willing to talk with the board about what's coming up in the next couple of days? Sure. Um, so switching gears to the the Silver Beach County Park Playground Project. We are going to be at the St. Joseph Today Welcome Center today through Monday with the new playground concepts. And so if you uh, wanna stop by and flip through our book and see our posters of what this new playground will look like, we welcome you to do so. We will have staff on site at the Welcome Center today and tomorrow during lunch hour, 11 to one. And we're happy to chat with folks that come in and answer questions, but we also encourage people to email us or reach out if they have questions. Um, we're really excited that we've, we are working through the approvals that we need. So we will be going out to bid fairly soon on this project. And that's a big point to, of, that's a big point for us in this whole process, this long process that we've been through. So um, the Welcome Center is located in downtown St. Joe on State Street. Not exactly sure what the address is, but it's 301 State Street. And they're open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I believe, those except Sunday. And come on in if you if you want to take a look. And one more time, just a shameless plug. If anyone uh, in the public wishes to be part of the project and to donate, how is the best way for them to do that? And is there any potential for matching funds yes. available? Thank you. Um, yes, we are still fundraising for this pro for the playground project. We are working with the Berrien Community Foundation. They are the best way to make the donation, tax deductible donations to them. They're located in St. Joseph. Berrien Community Foundation Silver Beach Playground has a website. You can donate right there online. And um, right now we are in the middle of a 
challenge grant by the Berrien Community Foundation. So any dollars donated right now up to 50,000 will essentially be doubled because of this challenge grant. I, I think I saw something. Could you tell us a little bit, um, we're studying or whatever to do and see if it can help the parking and the entry. Yeah, so the, um, the uh, Parks Department is in the, uh, the process of seeking approval to engage an outside consulting firm to help us with analysis on traffic flow. Yeah. So that's something that um, the, the staff is working through the approvals process now. It'll be flowing through the various committees over the next couple of weeks. Thank you. You're welcome. Brian, you need to move the mic closer to your mouth. Oh, sorry. Talking. I'll, real quickly, just as it pertains to the tires, the uh, one of the problems we have in the county is that that um, you know the recycling thing, as great as that is, um, people have to store the tires until they. And that's sometimes off putting. Yeah. So, what typically happens uh, with tires, and it's happening more and more in the country all the time, you can see it like it, wherever there's a tire store, there's concentric rings around that tire store, and the people uh, will drive to the first spot where they can't be seen. And then after they get new tires, and they'll drop them off in the ditch. Now, the county road department justifiably doesn't pick those tires up, they don't make that their responsibility. So, it falls on the landowners and um, and but it's it, it's not there, you know. It's it's it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it turns out to be for each individual. It's an unfunded mandate for everybody to clean up their own property out there, and the tires are a real problem. And I don't know the, what we can do about that as a county, but it's um, it's discouraging. You can go to a, a very reputable tire store like a like a best one over on Pipestone, and um, the people will drive away, and they you know if they head east. There's a lot of places where they can be, uh, they can get rid of those tires and they do it the first available time. Uh, Tom Smith's coming from the other direction, coming west, that, that happens. And so those tires get dropped off and I don't know what we can do for the citizens or for anybody to get it done, but, but landowners can't do anything about it except they can't pile them up on the road. They become their problem and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hard. And I don't know what solutions there can be out there, but. Uh, yeah. But it's a problem for the, it's a problem for the, the homeowners of Grand County. Any other questions? I have a quick question about styrofoam. Okay. Um, the um, Southeast Berrien, the community-owned facility, isn't taking styrofoam anymore mm -hmm. because I talked to somebody down there. Um, one of the Buchanan Township trustees has been running it for a while, a guy named Tom Gordon because um, um, Gainus, I can't think of his first name. Tim Gainus is the dad. Um, Andrew Gainus, I think, had left to go work somewhere else. They've got a new person coming in next mm -hmm. month. But Tom Gordon told me, well, we don't have anyone who wants styrofoam. Have you heard anything about styrofoam not being a desirable commodity any longer? I, From what I understand, the... But the biggest challenge about styrofoam is it's mostly air. So you can fill a 53 foot semi trailer, but once you take the air out, it's a, it's a small amount of plastic that you can then put back into the recycling stream. And the transport of that is expensive. And we, we get charged for at the event for the service. It's mostly the transport. Um, it was Tyler Gaines when he was there. Tyler, that's right. I did speak to him about uh, Tri Power Recycling out of Elkhart being regionally fairly close, and I, I'm not sure where that ended up or what that cost might be for them. But I can certainly we can connect with that new person and and see what we can do down there. Okay, and then um, I heard Jason. I didn't hear the other name. Genevieve. Genevieve. Yes. Would you stand just to be recognized? We appreciate everything you've done. <laughs> Okay. okay, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Um, general public comments, does anyone have anything? Going once, going twice. Okay, no public comments. We'll adjourn for committees and come back at 1030.